superconductor. So in the background, I have a superconductor. And this is an S-wave superconductor. I don't need a P-wave. It turns out, near the edge, these edges, <coughs> so this, this outside is a superconductor. These one-dimensional edges will satisfy one-dimensional superconductor. And also, these one-dimensional edges, although they're in proximity to S-wave superconductors, you can prove that because this is a topological insulator, you have strong spin-orbit interaction, this part is effectively P-wave. I'm sorry I don't have time to derive this for you. You can go through the derivations and see how that happens. This is effectively like P-wave. So you take a two-dimensional topological insulator, you set it against an S-wave superconductor, and there is superconducting proximity effect. So this thing becomes superconducting near the edge, and it becomes an effectively P-wave. Actually, it also has S-wave component, but the S-wave component is very far below in energy. So, so the interesting part is really a P-wave component. This is one way you can construct an effective P-wave one-dimensional P-wave superconductor um, when you have a construction looking like this. That's fine. Now, I start, but okay, then I have Marana modes running around, that's fine. But I want individual Marana modes, right? I want to isolate them. So how do I isolate them? As I have told you, you do something, you try to, if you have an endless line, then you have this Marana modes running around. So I can end it. So how do I end it? I can end it, for instance, a lot of you work on spectronics, you like ferromagnetic materials. I just put a ferromagnetic insulator here. So this will be Marona close, and it turns out then right here. This construction would give me Marona modes. Localized, sorry. So I can actually have Marona modes. <coughs> In this configuration. Or if you say, okay, for magnetic materials, how that takes extra fabrication? Can that make things easier? Yeah, I can have another configuration just like that. So I have, again, that's my topological insulators. And this is a superconductor. And I have my um, topological insulators right here. And so this part, this part is Marona, and this part is not. This part becomes the trivial. So now, instead of this, I just make this part. I gate it. It turns out when you play with the chemical potential, you remember earlier when I talk about Kitayak's model, when I talk about two-dimensional uh, spinless uh, super, superconductors, you remember I can play with the chemical potential. It can go from trivial to non-trivial situation. So if I can play with the chemical potential, I can play with the gate. So I can gate this part and make this part either trivial or non-trivial. And that when I make this part trivial, then again, I can isolate my marijuana modes. So this is another configuration that you can design. Sorry, I don't have time to derive it, but if you just go through the derivation, you can actually convince yourself that you can do it this way. So you can also have marijuana modes like this, or instead of gating it, you can apply a very large supercurrent. Um, when you make the current very, very strong, only on one side, you suppress superconductivity, and this part becomes trivial again. Anyway, if you make one side trivial, so that the Marana current of uh, this modes becomes truncated, then on the two sides, you actually have isolated modes. Um, so that's another way of doing it. And yet, you say, okay, okay, that's all fine. Um, then I need my topological insulator. Actually, you don't even need topological insulator, as it turns out. So there's a final scheme I would describe. I won't go through it any detail. Um, I can make a S-wave superconductor here. And I just make a wire. I just take a semiconducting wire. So this is a semiconducting wire. The only requirement is that it has very large spin orbit interaction. Spin orbit interaction. If I do it that way, so this can become superconductor. 
conducting by proximity. It sits on the superconductor. I have strong string ordered interaction. So what am I missing? What's the third ingredient? I need to break commerce generously, so I apply a magnetic field. You can prove that by playing with this structure, theoretically, you can have neural anomalies too. So this is what a lot of experimentalists are trying to do, construct different configurations. These are not the only possibilities. Actually, one more thing is that if I take a topological insulator and I put on top of it superconductors, S-wave superconductors, there are many different configurations you can design. an effective one-dimensional wire. Another say, okay, so I have topological insulators, I have spin orbit interactions, I have superconductors, I'm fine. I'm missing what? I'm missing Zeeman field, right? So what happened is that you make this flux, you thread flux zero, <coughs> you thread flux one flux quantum. Then in this configuration, if this is hot, one flux, effectively one flux quantum, um, and if I call that hot, then you can isolate your neural anomalies along this direction. Or you can even make a tri-junction. I have bottom, that's topological insulator. On top, I can have superconductors. So I have superconductors on top, and I have topological interstitials behind, and I can start playing with the flux. I can play with different flux, phi one, phi two. With this configuration, I can isolate one neuron node in the center, and then I start constructing the tri-junctions. I have many, many tri-junctions. Then I can start playing with different flux at different locations, and I can annihilate or create a neuron node, or I can transport it, I can fuse them. So I can start doing all kinds of crazy things in your mind. Experimentally, this is very, very, very hard, okay? Because you have to make all these tri-junctions, they have to have high quality, you will have to go around in different places to play with the flux. But what I'm trying to tell you is that there are plenty of possible examples you can construct. You can go home and construct your own. You just need what? Superconductivity. You need, <laughs> you need what? Spin orbit interaction. You need to break from a generous. You, you just use those three ingredients. You can start constructing your own scheme of creation and, and, and uh, localization and whatever of neuron on those. You can, you can start, use your, start using your imagination to play around. So I can only give you a flavor in a limited amount of time and have gone over time. But I hope that at least you get a sense of this idea that in condensed matter physics systems, with these very novel uh, concepts, one can start realizing interesting, very interesting physics. Oh, let me make one last comment before I end. All of these things we have described so far, we have assumed that we have effectively non-interacting electronic systems. So there's no strong Coulomb interaction, no strong correlation. But of course, in a two-dimensional, in a one-dimensional system, or even in two-dimension, uh, Coulomb interactions for the uh, electrons can be very strong. So theorists have also looked into it. When you have an effectively one-dimensional system, you can start you know, adding a lot of particles in it. Coulomb interaction, when Coulomb interaction is too strong, then all of these pictures will break down. But as long as Coulomb interaction is not exceedingly strong, all of these non-interacting features are still valid. It's just like the quantity, quantitative description will have to be modified. So um, although this is not really spintronics, but you also see where the spin physics comes into play. We are dealing with spinless situation, and the spinless situation is that you have to uh, lift your Cromer's degeneracy. And so there's a lot of film related to spin physics that you can uh, play with. So here I end my discussions on topological superconductors and all other ones. Thank you.
for those students, may, you may wonder uh, whether Professor Ye is a uh, theorist or a uh, experimentalist. Uh, if you want to give us uh, the, the story about your uh, undergraduate, right, then the people will understand why uh, he, she knows so much. Uh, it's a calculus course, right? <laughs> My calculus teacher, Professor Hong Ming Chang, he was known to be Shasha, but he gave me a hundred. <laughs> because my my test, I scored 96 out of a hundred. And uh, the second highest grade in my score in my class was 60. And then all the rest were good. <laughs> the professor decided he would take square root and multiply by 10, but in my case, square root of 96 is almost 10, and so he gave me 100. And I don't know, now, nowadays, I don't know if you post uh, grades in public or not. In the old days, I think it's not a good practice, but all of the grades and with names are all posted in the top. And so the whole <coughs> NTU, people were like, whoa, nice shot. <laughs> Country, all the professor coming from. Anyway, I, I, I love theory, I love math, but I also love experiments. <laughs> so, yeah. Okay, so now let, let's thank Professor Yeh again. Okay.